Hello, I am Senator Olympia Snow of Maine. First, I want to thank National Commander Raymond Dempsey for inviting me to share in this landmark event, as well as extend to all of you a warm Maine greeting during this inaugural virtual march on Washington for Veterans. What a groundbreaking occasion indeed. If only Congress were as well organized as this undertaking, we might achieve some real results. I could not be more privileged to join with you in this momentous day as we recognize the inexpressible valor and unimaginable heroism that are the enduring hallmarks of our nation's phenomenal disabled American veterans. This stellar organization has remained unwavering in recognizing our exceptional men and women who have made brave and truly monumental sacrifices on behalf of our country. The DAV has truly been on the front lines of championing those who have answered our nation's greatest call, and we couldn't be more grateful. The fact is, no single issue unites us more as Americans than the solemn obligation to stand by our veterans who have so courageously and steadfastly stood by all of us. And nothing coalesces us more as a country than the sanctity of advocating for the causes of America's 23.4 million veterans, including 1.2 million DAV members. We can never, ever repay you or thank you enough. But what we can do in Congress is to fight for and enact measures that demonstrate the immeasurable respect and honor that is your due. And on that note, let me first just say how pleased I was to be the lead Republican co-sponsoring your number one legislative priority, which has now passed both the U.S. House and Senate, and that is the long overdue budget reform for Veterans Administration medical care. Because it's time we once and for all ensure our brave veterans receive the critical health care funding appropriated by Congress for the VA's budget on time and in full. That's why I proudly join with Senator Kaka of Hawaii, the chairman of the Veterans Affairs Committee, in introducing the Veterans Health Care Budget Reform and Transparency Act of 2009, which would secure funding for veterans health care one year in advance of the regular appropriations process. And I couldn't agree more with Commander Dempsey, who said this legislation represented another major step towards ensuring sufficient, timely, and predictable funding for veterans' health care programs. The fact is we can ill afford to delay fundamental veterans' health care funding with more regrettable partisan politics and unacceptable congressional deadlocks. This welcome change would end the uncertainty for these vital resources, and with just minor differences between the House and Senate bills, there is no reason this initiative cannot be delivered to the President for this signature this year. But we clearly cannot stop there. For example, it simply defies all semblance of reason that outstanding members of the armed forces who have a service-connected disability rated as total are not permitted to travel on military aircraft. This inequity should have been remedied 10 years ago when Senator Inouye, a distinguished disabled veteran, a great American hero, and I first joined forces to rectify what is an outrageous situation. And I will keep on battling until it is fixed. Moreover, offsets to annuities for military retirees and their survivors continues to be a vexing problem. That, uh, that is why I once again join with Senator Nelson to introduce legislation to repeal the dependency and indemnity payment offset to survivor benefit plan payments. I also remain committed to providing full concurrent receipt of both military and veterans disability retirement and have again co-sponsored the Retired Pay Restoration Act of 2009 with the Senate Majority Leader Senator Reid in the 111th Congress to address the injustice of this current program of decreasing one payment by the amount of the other. I also could not be more pleased that a provision I authored with Small Business Committee Chair Senator Mary Landrieu was included in the Department of Defense Authorization Bill, which would ensure that small business owners who are service-disabled veterans are once and for all placed on a level playing field with other small business contracting programs as they should be. And finally, I was proud to introduce the Keeping Our Promise to America's Military Veterans Act of 2009 to ensure that issues important to veterans and their families are a priority in the 111th Congress, especially now in this economy, with troops returning from Iraq and Afghanistan, and with the changing needs of older veterans. 
it is of paramount importance that quality, accessible services and benefits are available to veterans and their families. Once again, I want to express my deepest admiration and limitless support for the disabled American veterans whose unflinching commitment and dedicated leadership on behalf of our servicemen and women is truly humbling and are inspiring. May God bless you and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much.